Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now Spider-Man Remastered is finally out for PC and I've got to say, as someone who never played the PlayStation original, I'm sort of wondering why. I'm no more than an hour into the game and I'm already having an absolute blast. It seems to run fairly well on my modern mid-range system, which currently consists of an i5 12400F and RTX 3050. There are a few dips and drops here and there, and I'm sure performance will vary depending on where you are and what you're doing, but my initial impressions are good. These performance metrics are the result of combining a bit of swinging around the city with some close quarters combat. Of course, I can't make any assumptions about how it will run on the developer stated minimum system requirements, but what I do like about said specs is that there are a few different average performance columns that detail what you should expect from or what you should target with various hardware configurations. Today, however, is all about one or two, maybe three pieces of hardware specifically. Regular viewers will know already, but if you found this video by chance or it's been suggested to you, then let me introduce you to my AMD Athlon 3000G config. In these no graphics card videos, the aim of the game is simple. All we try and do is get modern game releases, usually big AAA titles, running on what once was one of the most affordable avenues into PC gaming, a $40 APU with onboard Vega 3 graphics. If this can't handle it, then we'll try other hardware too. Last time we were able to squeeze somewhat surprising frame rates out of Stray, everyone's favourite and possibly the only cat simulator, but today, I have a feeling that hitting 30 FPS will be a little more difficult. The immediately obvious thing to do, as with all games tested on this thing, is to completely lower the game's graphical quality settings to their respective minimums. Spider-Man Remastered also benefits from the inclusion of FSR 2.0, which means we can render the game at a lower internal resolution before it's upscaled to fit the native display. This technology really helps breathe new life into aging or just generally weaker hardware, though it can be used to squeeze more performance out of modern GPUs too, without too much of a visual sacrifice when the higher quality settings are used. Quality settings that most certainly won't be utilized today. There is also a dynamic scaling option that allows us to set a frame rate target and then the res will adjust automatically. This is also welcome. Using FSR 2.0 with the Ultra Performance option on its own seems to provide the best results in terms of all of my tests today, but there is also an 800 by 600 resolution option as well in case you want to sacrifice the visuals a bit more. This makes things a bit too blurry for me, especially with FSR, and it makes very little performance difference actually. Unfortunately, the Athlon 3000G couldn't quite manage to maintain a solid 30fps in both indoor close combat situations and outdoor environments. Don't get me wrong, it's certainly a solid effort from the Athlon and it does come close to and exceed this frame rate with the absolute lowest settings and FSR enabled with ultra performance mode. I was still able to somewhat enjoy the game, actually. Whether I was taking on hordes of bad guys or just swinging through the sizeable shiny downtown structures. The game performed a little worse when outside, which is the opposite to what happened with my personal i5 rig. Now of course there is a bit of legroom as far as overclocking the iGPU is concerned, but it doesn't really make a difference here, and thus it's not really worth going into that much detail about. The Athlon 3000G has put up a solid fight over the years, but I think we can't really call it victorious here, though if any future patches change this then I'll be sure to update you. That said it's not completely useless when it comes to running Spider-Man, but I mean if you were desperate it could sort of tide you over until you upgraded I guess. With a tear in my eye then it's time to move on. Now I'll be testing the 5700G Ryzen a little later on in this video but first a quick word on integrated Intel graphics. My i3-12300 is much more powerful than the Athlon on the CPU side of things which is more than I can say for the onboard graphics side of things. The UHD 730 graphics didn't have a great time with Spider-Man Remastered but Maybe a driver update in the future will resolve or at least improve this. I didn't even benchmark this because we can chalk it up as unplayable. 
For my next and final trick, it's time to bring out the big guns. In this case, the Ryzen 7 5700G, one of the best APUs you can still buy right now. 8 cores and 16 threads on the CPU side of things, with onboard Radeon graphics. I've got a good feeling about this one. I apologise for the switch to 2009 Call of Duty style recording the gameplay from the screen, but my capture device decided it wanted to not work anymore. Maybe it's the heat. It can't be bothered, and I don't blame it. Seriously though, I dropped it a while ago and the power connector part got a little bit damaged, but I'm getting distracted. The Ryzen 7 5700G, as expected, does do a much better job. A really good job, actually. I started a new game for this test run and played through the first half an hour, as this gives us a little bit of everything. Swinging through the city, combined with some up-close and personal combat situations. Here, the Ryzen 7 did a really good job, as I've probably said way too much already. I mean, really good. <laughs> we could turn the settings up a bit for sure, or perhaps select a different FSR preset, perhaps balanced or quality, but like I said, this gives us a little more room to work with and ensures that we don't dip below 30 FPS in terms of that 1% low figure, from what I saw in my test anyway. I haven't played much of the game, so performance will likely differ or change in different areas, and there may be a few particularly intensive scenes that could possibly cripple the 5700G's performance. But from what I'm seeing here, I'm very impressed, and this APU certainly offers a decent experience. I'm pretty sure other APUs, such as the 5600G and some of the 4000 series chips will also do a good job. The 5600G has 6 cores and 12 threads, so I'm pretty sure results would be similar because it would still be the Radeon graphics that would be the primary bottleneck. Don't quote me on any of that, but I'm fairly certain other Ryzen APUs, maybe even including the older 3400G, should do okay. Now that said, the Athlon was still surprising. I think it's fair to say that it did put up a good fight, but the less said about the i3-12-300, the better at this point in time. The star of the show was certainly the 8-core 16-threaded Ryzen 7 5700G, and as far as the game is concerned itself, well, it seems fairly well optimised and lower-end hardware friendly. I'd certainly recommend checking out a more technical analysis or review though, perhaps something from Digital Foundry, because I haven't really tested that much hardware. There were a few unavoidable micro stutters, however, hence some of the 0.1% low figures, but nothing too off-putting. This tended to happen when perhaps we switched from swinging around the city to a in-game cutscene and then the combat started. It, it wasn't anything too serious, but it's worth noting in case you experience this and wonder what's going on. I think it's something that's just going to happen with a lot of hardware right now, and it happened on my i5 rig too. With all that said and done, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Spider-Man Remastered, well, I think it's defeated the Athlon 3000G, but the Ryzen 7 5700G stands strong for another day, and I look forward to see what these APUs can do when we probably test out Saints Row, I think it's the next big AAA release, so you'll see these chips again then. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed it leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.